It's exactly a year since four children were killed in a house fire in Derbyshire. Somehow their mother survived and is now having to cope without them. Well, there were smoke alarms, but they weren't working. Derbyshire Fire Service is urging everyone to have them installed and checked. And now, as Kylie Pentelow has been finding out, they're also pushing for a more extreme safety measure, sprinklers in all new homes. <laughs> Tommy was nine, Alicia six, Apollonia two, and Rocco was four. They all died in a house fire. Their mother survived. I said to the doctor, I said, how many children of mine are alive? And he didn't even speak. He just shook his head and I knew anyway, you know. But could this tragedy have been avoided? You could stop almost all fire deaths. Instead of killing three, four hundred people every year, we can get it down to almost zero. We just need to decide to do it. We'll be finding out what it's like when your home fills with smoke and how Derbyshire's chief is fighting to save lives. The look at the window itself, the room is now starting to flash over. It's gone past the point of return. We can no longer have tragedies like this happening when there is a solution available to prevent it. It was a cold January evening. The four children went home, their mother Rachel lit a fire, then the family went to bed. And then the next thing, I woke and the house was full of thick black smoke. I heard Tommy saying to Mummy, Mummy, the house, the house is full of something, the house is full of something, and that's when I opened my eyes and woke up because he actually woke me. I got out of the bed, struggled out of the bed, tried to get the window open, but the smoke was just too thick. Got hold of Tommy, managed to locate him through his voice, got hold of him, went to the top of the stairs, just trying to work out what was going on. Managed to get the window open. <coughs> I stood behind Tommy and I picked him up like this, trying to push him out through the window. But his arms and legs were going like this and just, he was frightened, you know, to go through the window. Um, <clears throat> I'd not sort of got enough about me because I was f confused to say, come on, Tommy, if you don't get out the window, you, you will die. Mm. Rachel said in the inquest into the children's deaths that the next thing she knew, she was flying through the air. I don't believe I jumped, she said. Maybe I fell. I got to A and E and I said to the doctor, I said, how many children of mine are alive? And he didn't even speak, he just shook his head and I, I knew anyway, you know. Her hair was burnt off, uh, she got bruises everywhere. Horrible scratch all down one arm, which she was just staring at, which is what uh, Tommy was holding on to. And she smelled horrible, she smelled of smoke. That's what you could smell in the room. and. It was just, it was a horrible thing. And every time you get that smoky smell, no, that's all I think about. The blaze was found to be caused by a spark or ember from an open fire. There was no guard. There were smoke alarms in the house, but they weren't working. Two hadn't been fitted and one had no batteries in it. The fire service say if they had been working, the family could have survived. One of the worst fires that Derbyshire Fire and Rescue Services had to attend for many, many years, especially in terms of loss of life. But the general theme that runs through all fires is that the need to have working smoke detectors on every floor in your home. Over the past 18 months, 18 people have died in house fires in Derbyshire. That's the third worst record in the country. So does everybody agree with Alex? that the smoke alarm is the most important thing on the table. Hands up if you do. They're trying everything they can to reduce that number, training them young. Wherever you live, whatever kind of house you live in, you should always have a smoke alarm. And for some, free smoke alarms. I'm just going to test it now to show you. So you push it to test it. That's good, that is. <laughs> But now a new ambitious campaign. Derbyshire Fire Service want it to be mandatory for sprinklers to be fitted in every new home. 
In a dramatic demonstration, they're setting fire to two children's bedrooms. This room has no safety measures. This one is fitted with sprinklers. By fitting sprinklers into the home, it's like having a firefighter in every room in your house, immediately available to respond should there be a fire. The fire starts. Then after just a few minutes, the sprinklers activate. In the other room, it's a different story. We're about 12 minutes in now. The fire service has just gone inside, but you can see there'd be no chance of survival if a child was inside that room. And after the fire's put out, the devastation's clear. But in the room with the sprinklers, hardly any difference. The campaign has the backing of former Crime Watch presenter Nick Ross. I think what Derbyshire's doing is fantastic. I mean, there's really a lot of indolence in, in Whitehall and in, in Westminster. They don't see a political issue because fire deaths have been coming down bit by bit by bit. So three or four hundred, that's a price worth paying every year. Derbyshire's saying, oh no, it's not. It just isn't. Each one of those is a tragedy. Also watching Caroline, who was seriously injured in a fire when she was a child. Her sister died. Tell me how it felt actually watching those fires. It brought it all back, you know, the smells, the sound, the flames. It just shows how quick, how easy, how fast it can happen. You know, one minute everything's normal, the next minute your house is full of smoke, your house is on fire and how quickly the flames can just take over. So tell me what you'd say to those people who have the power to put sprinklers in new homes. Do it. All right, it's going to cost them money to, put them to, to install the sprinklers, but what's more important, money or the cost of human life? And it was the deaths of Rachel's four children this time last year that prompted the fire chief into action. As soon as that fire uh, happened, and what a tragedy that was, I took pen to paper and wrote to the fire minister and said that we can no longer have tragedies like this happening when there is a solution available to prevent it. Smoke detection is required to give you that early warning, but if we're going to do the job and do it properly, we have sprinklers installed because a sprinkler not only uh, alerts an individual that there's a problem, it actually extinguishes the fire. Therefore, the person has a longer time to escape, and when my firefighters turn up, they're not putting themselves at so much risk to save somebody else's life. But until there's a change, firefighters need to be ready for the big blazes. This is where they train, and I'm going inside to see what it's like when your home fills with smoke. Already we can see now, it's becoming quite thick. Now we'd be unable to see an exit door even at this stage yeah. now. Okay, so we've been in here probably about uh, a minute and a half, two minutes, and um, I, I can see that there's a camera in front of me because I can see the light, but I can't see the lens or anything, so I'm guessing I'm looking in the right location for it. And I can see that you, you really need a plan. Um, if you woke up in this situation, even if it's your own home, you wouldn't have a clue which way to turn even, which way to get out of bed, let alone find your best escape out of a fire. Every day is very difficult. I can't say it isn't because it is, but I do feel it is slowly getting better and the mornings don't seem as harsh as what they were at first when you have to come to terms with it each morning. These pictures of the children were taken on Rachel's mobile phone. A firefighter managed to save it from the house. Pictures of their smiling faces, all Rachel has left of her four children. I miss Apollonia's arms on my neck when I woke up in the morning. Um, Raquel, he was always around my legs, cuddling me. Alicia, I miss being with her and doing the girly things we did. And I miss Tom's support and his love. Now, 2012 is of course a living...